He's been on this show many times, but now Canadian best-selling author of The Dolphin Way. Great to have you back on BT. Congrats on the success of the book. And we're talking about uh, a new generation, Generation Z, in fact. Hearing the buzzwords, break this down for us. What is and who is involved with Generation Z? So Gen Z is a big group, actually. They're youth under the age of 20, roughly, and they're 2 billion people worldwide, a quarter of North America's population. And what's neat about them, it's the first generation that's grown up post 9-11. So they grew up amidst global insecurity, financial issues, an awareness of the environment and depleting resources. And the big one, they were wired from the crib. So technology is like air to them they are d digital natives and that makes them different you know different in, in the aspect of communication when I think about the idea of growing up and email being a novelty how do you even begin to manage this as a parent as a teacher the aspect of technology and the social media communication well I think we really want to look at it in balance the benefits and drawbacks just like diet I say you know as a parent has to monitor a child's diet make sure they're getting healthy foods they also have to monitor technology make sure that they're getting healthy information and um, application of technology and leave the junk food or leave the bad stuff and really guide their children to that balanced place. And the idea of the preventative measure because I think it's hard to say that you are successfully going to de deprive them altogether and say you can't use it because it's a reality. It's the way kids are communicating, especially teens. Uh, what kind of rules do you, do you see that really work about managing the idea of social media? Well again, I think recognizing that, especially Gen Z, it's in their air and they're going to use it. And so really again talking to them just like we would using analogy of diet or sleep or other really important things so you don't want to be like I say the tiger really like strict and overbearing on it give them some choices autonomy that develops their ability to think for themselves about technology and you don't want to be like that jellyfish overly permissive saying I don't know what to do it's everywhere I have no control but you want to be there to be that middle place firm yet flexible guiding the child and with Gen Z then when you look at these characteristics what makes this group different especially when you look at the motivating factors behind everything. So 70% of Gen Z kids, they want a job with a social cause. They are socially aware, and this is important to them. They also say they don't want jobs. They want to be entrepreneurs. They want to start their own businesses because they're living in a world of freelancers. And that's really important for teachers and parents to understand. If they're giving a lesson in math, you have to explain the meaning behind the math. How is this going to make the world a better place? Maybe it's going to help them understand computers, or maybe it's going to help them understand data so that they can one day cure cancer or work towards some kind of social cause so that's really important they also want to work in teams they're a collaborative generation versus the gen me which was the all about me generation dubbed and they were more a competitive generation I think it's so fascinating because when you talk about gen me and now gen Z that sense of entitlement coming out of okay you're gonna go through the uh, traditional education channels and then think you're gonna get that job but yeah the, the, the aspect of creativity is so crucial and being that entrepreneur to create your own opportunity. Yeah, the 21st century, we say this is a non-linear century. This is a, the conceptual age. So that linear age of like rote memory, following certain steps and getting to a place is over. Knowing the right answer left us when Google entered our lives. We don't need to know the right answer. We need to know how to ask the right question, how to apply that diverse knowledge to different settings, and how to think out of the box. So all of this is what we call cognitive flexibility, thinking broadly. And that's where lessons and parents and teachers to really foster that. This is right brain, this is the right brain era. It's really exciting actually. Um, the arts, music, design, storytelling, all of this stuff is going to become more important because we also are in abundance. There's, everyone has a cell phone, but the person's going to, who's going to design the interesting cell phone is going to make it. Keeping the curiosity alive, it's a great message. Again, the book is called The Dolphin Way and you're going to be speaking TEDx Kelowna, correct? Yes. Yeah. End, end of the month. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Thanks for coming by. Dr. Shimmy Kang, once again,